Hello YouTube, this is Matt here with a model review, a long awaited model review. This one was announced back in November last year as part of the 2017 range from Hornby. Of course we're talking about the Wainwright H-Class, which is here finally and surprisingly as well. Uh, there's only one available at the moment, which is being shipped to retailers at the moment, which is the Southeastern and Chatham version. Uh, which you can see in front of us here. This is R3538, South Eastern Chatham livery, numbered 308. And hopefully, if you've ordered one or pre ordered one, it should be with you very shortly. Massive thanks to the guys at Derails, Dan, both of them, because there's two of them there, um, for getting this out very quickly. I was on the phone as they walked through the door. Um, so, and it got down to the island very quickly and today is Saturday, so you were spot on what you were saying, it would be with you on Saturday. Now of course, there's not just one um, model, Hornby do a range or a number of liveries for this. So this is the first one to arrive, and the next two we expect will be not too far behind, possibly December, January time. So the other two are 3540, which is the Southern Railway liveried H-Class, which is uh, inlined olive green with the number of 1324, which is printed on the side of the tanks. There is also a BR version, R3539, and this is a push-pull fitted version, and the number on the bunker of that loco is 31. 518. Uh, this tooling will also appear in a train pack with uh, the Monsal Push Pull coaches, and uh, that will be out a little bit later on. Uh, the other two individual locos will be out, as I say, December, January time. So let's go on to this loco which we have in front of us, number 308, in the rather, rather impressive uh, South Eastern Chatham lined green livery. Um, a lot of questions surround this model uh, in terms of the paint colour and uh, sadly my H class or H class or my C class is back at home in Buckinghamshire so I can't go and get it. Instead I know that the paint that I use from Phoenix is quite similar to the um, Backman C class so um, I'll just bring into shot my P-Class, which I've just recently repainted. And to, to be honest with you, the colour is not that different. So that is a good thing. So Hornby have done their research on their paint colours. And uh, they match quite nicely. So that is a good surprise. And really well done to the uh, decoration department in China. And also Hornby as well for doing all the research. So that's great news. Let's have a little chat about the specs of this model. Uh, so this model is a 044T, which is a tank engine. Um, four main driving wheels at the front, four trailing bogey wheels at the back. It does have pickup on all wheels, so power pickup should be quite good on this. It is also equipped with a five pole motor with a flywheel so basically Hornby are belt and braces basically making sure the model will run really well with an energy store of a flywheel on the motor shaft itself and that goes through a small gearbox and to the wheels uh, it takes an eight pin DCC chip which is mounted just in front of a cab um, and you can access this by unscrewing the body, there's a screw at the front underneath the NEM coupling and two screws either side of the bogey which will release the body shell so you can get at the DCC chip and blanking plate as well. Uh, the box comes with full of instructions on where to oil as well as a very nice detailing pack, you can see the brake rigging in there the NEM couplings and also part of the uh, brake gear which goes on the side here and goes up into the cab. 
for models, minimum radius is a second radius curve, so you should be alright uh, from second upwards. Um, so it should be a pretty good running model and a very uh, stable model on the corners as well. So let's take a look at this model a little bit closer in terms of its livery. This is the almost fully lined South Eastern Chatham green livery. We'll start at the back, you can see uh, the bunker is nicely lined out with a red and black edging around the outside. The numbers are printed in a gold colour to represent the etched or um, milled brass numbers on the side of the locos. You can see the flared tender top and that is also lined out as well as the cab, door and also a nicely printed uh, logo and lettering on the side of the tank. You can also see in this um, piece of footage here that the wheels are also painted and also lined which a big thumbs up to Hornby, they don't usually put lining on wheels but I think in this situation they had to. The H-Class is a very pretty locomotive as well as the other South Eastern Chatham locomotives and they are full of lining. It is a very complex livery as Hornby have stated on their website it's one of the most complex they've ever undertaken which I think also Backman said when they did the C-Class. Um, it's got lovely lining along the uh, running plate and also on the sandboxes. Uh, the pipes, the sanding pipes are painted red and are very delicate so be very careful. If we look up to the top, what has impressed people so far on this livery is the rather snazzy brass dome. And I have to say it's very nice. It's, uh, it's a separate process to do this so the dome is fitted separately. So it's a chromium plate sort of uh, thing they put on top of the plastic. It's not real brass, it is just a plating on top of plastic. So that will get rid of some of the people that are complaining about painted domes. However, Hornby have painted in a brass colour the safety valve, as I call it, bonnet, uh, around the actual safety valves themselves. I believe they couldn't do it because it's not a separate fitting like the dome. It's part of the body shell, which makes it more difficult. Um, so they have just elected to paint this gold instead. You can see the lovely whistle on the top of the um, the roof. Again, it's going to be very delicate. This is plastic, not a turned brass um, part, which is a little bit um, sad, but uh, I imagine it will probably get knocked off quite easily on, uh, uh, on handling as well. You can also see the cab roof has an opening vent on the roof, which is excellent. The chimney at the front is nicely detailed with rivets around the flange uh, which meets the smoke box. You can see the boiler band lining, the light green in the middle, two yellows on the outer and then another two reds on the outer of that as well. On the front of the loco we have the buffer beam which is nicely lined out and edged line around the outside of yellow and black which goes around the buffer housings. The buffers are sprung which is excellent but the buffer housings themselves should have some yellow lines around um, some more lining. Sadly that doesn't have that on this and neither does the Backman C which is a little bit of a disappointment. It has clearly printed uh, numbers on the front 308 and moving up we have the lamp irons three along the front as well as the vacuum pipe at the top, which is a plastic uh, fitting. Uh, there's some handles as well on the um, inspection hatches for the cylinders, smoke box darts, and also another uh, lamp iron at the top of the smoke box. On the side of the smoke box saddle, you've got some nice printing down the bottom here, as well as the lubrication pot, and also a nice uh, painted uh, brass around the top of the uh, splasher itself as well as a printed plate where it was built. 
Um, also have pipe work going up to the boiler and the clack valve. Uh, behind the smoke box you can also see highlighted a nice gold band or brass band around the uh, uh, external um, housing of the smoke box which is a nice touch. On the other side you can see some lovely detail coming down from the pipe work coming from the cab which drops down to the steam reverser. It is not a Westinghouse pump as some think. It is the reverser for all the valve gear in between the uh, frames. This has just been simply lined out. Uh, I imagine the printing technology has not quite uh, got to the point where it can print all the lovely little uh, details and painting uh, of the shapes and lining onto the actual um, cylinders themselves. Again we have a lovely uh, clack valve on this side. There's small handles also on the splash which I forgot to mention on the other side. Um, but nicely detailed throughout, nice painting, nice quality. Onto the back of the loco we can see more exquisite lining detail. As well as separately fitted lamp irons and vacuum pipe. Numbers are also printed on the buffer beam itself. As well as a little bit of rivet detail as well. On the back of the cab you can see it's glazed as well as the front and there's some lovely ventilation holes at the top as well just running along the underside of the cab roof. The coal load is removable so if you wish to add real coal to it you can remove it and add your own coal. In the side opening of the cab we can see some rather impressive uh, painted detail in there including the uh, brake handle and also the reverser as well as the regulator handle painted on um, water glasses as well and also I believe there's also a separately fitted um, little handle in there as well on a couple of the pipe work etc. I'll say the cab is fully glazed on the front and rear as well as the opening hatch on the top for ventilation. So you've had a look at the technical specs of the model, had a look around the model and the printing and the lining, which is absolutely exquisite. We'll now take her onto the rolling road, which I have here. Unfortunately, no doubt here at the moment. Uh, hopefully she will get back to the model layout in the future, where she'll be uh, tested on a few trains and see how she gets on. But for now, let's put her on the rolling road and see how she performs. Okay, so we've got it all set up on the rolling road. Uh, this is probably its second bit of running because it has been run beforehand before it got shipped to me uh, by the wonderful guys at uh, D-Rails uh, Models. Um, definitely worth checking them out. They're a great retailer, very nice to speak to. Um, run by the two Dans, so nice and confusing for you. I'd like to say thanks to D-Rails for getting this out to me very quickly and for doing such a great price and a great job at contacting customers in order to pay the balance. So let's give it a go. So that really brings about an end to our review, as you can see it's running nice and steady and stably at a constant speed, and as it suggests in the Hornby manual, do it an hour or half an hour each way, so forwards and backwards, just to run in all the gears and run in the motor before putting it on a train and causing damage. A lot of people will ask the question, 
why it wasn't a preserved H class of the Bluebell model. There's a lot of question on that and there's a lot of response on that, mainly from what we gather is to do with decoration. And with the Bluebells one it's slightly different. There is some lining missing off the side of the roof and apparently there's some lining either missing off the chassis or the um, or the under frames around the uh, around the chassis area. But either way the model is similar. So if you fancy having a go at just renaming it, you can do. I believe they're quite similar in terms of uh, what's on it, chimney, dome, and the uh, and the bunker itself, which is the flared type bunker. Um, if you do go about changing the numbers on this, I will advise extreme care, extreme care to take the numbers off. Um, Hornby's finishes, in my view, have got weaker over the years and are not as strong as they used to be back in 2007-2008. Um, so extreme care will be needed. Numbers for the side, you can get them from Roxy Mouldings, which is an etch, so it's an etch brass, you need to clean them up and put them on with a bit of varnish and just let them dry out and it will be stuck to the side of the uh, bunker. But the front buffer beam and the rear buffer beam I'd advise using um, yellow with black shading, so the southern type of lettering. Um, or numbering I should say. Um, you can get that from HMRS press fix transfers or meth fix transfers or other transfers are available like Model Master and Fox etc. Other stuff you some Chatham locos we're going to look forward to is the P-Class from Hattons which should be around December January time or I expect it might be a little bit later. Um, they're for £100, you can pre-order from Hattons directly. This is their own product, not a commission. Um, but before that, we should get the Backman bird cages. The first set have already been delivered, which are the crimson red ones to the BR livery. And the South Eastern Chatham uh, lined, um, as I call it, Purple Lake, is due out between uh, December, January time. It was November, but it's been moved back, and I think that's down to a slight change in the colour, as it was slightly too dark. Um, the seven green ones are also due out around that time or a little bit later, so hopefully that'll be the next review. The next video I'll be doing is possibly here on the Isle of Wight at the Model Railway Show at Medina Leisure Centre. I'm hoping to get to Wally, but I'm not 100% sure as this has just taken all my money. So we'll see. But hopefully, there will be some good announcements at Wally this year. I expect there will be a 2018 Southern announcement at some point. And who knows, maybe Hornby will do 263. There's a lot of rumour about the Collectors Club that there will be 263 in the Collectors Club, but we are not sure if a collector's club will either happen or 263 will happen. We'll see. But for now, we look forward to 2018 and I believe there will be another southern model of some description from Hornby. Those of you who are a member of my forum group on Facebook and possibly Twitter probably would have seen it already. So if you feel like joining in and having a look, take a look on Facebook, Twitter and possibly Instagram. Thanks for watching this video, I hope I haven't bored you too much and we'll see you on the next one.